Stressful studies with finals week right around the corner, students learn how to stay calm during crunch time. Jumping Jeopardy. Trampolines can be fun, but are the life-changing risks worth it? And Christmas Cougars. Tis the season to get on the court, but some BYU athletes are using this holiday time to lend a helping hand. I'm Sean Gordon. And I'm Lauren Simpson. It's Thursday, December 6th, and in Utah, it's 12 o'clock. From KBYU and the BYU Department of Communications, Award-winning 11 News at Noon. The trial for the murder of a Utah corrections officer came to a close after five years of battle in the courtroom. The court sentenced Curtis Allgaier to seven consecutive life sentences without chance of parole. Allgaier shot Officer Steven Anderson on a hospital visit and then attacked two more people during his escape. Anderson's family say they have forgiven Allgaier and are relieved that the trial is over. And pollution is in the air, but regulators can't agree on a solution to fix it. The Utah Air Quality Division says new regulations will not be complete in time for a looming federal deadline. The board failed to pass the division's 23-part plan, and now they're searching for pollution cuts. If Utah fails to fulfill national requirements, the EPA could cut funding for interstate highways. Finals week is coming up, and BYU students are sleeping less, cramming for exams, and stress levels are off the charts. 11 News reporter Sarah Clark shows us how students can keep calm and study on. Learn almost no one can escape the stress at the end of the semester, but experts say it's not only possible, but necessary to stay relaxed. Between classes, work, and having a social life, many BYU students feel overwhelmed. I don't have a life. Um, very busy and like I might have taken on too much. Now that finals start the next week, as odd as it sounds, it's time to relax the most. Your brain doesn't work as well under a high level of stress. You want to have your brain working as, as well as possible, of course, for studying for a test or taking a test. Doctors say stress shuts down the mind, making it hard to think clearly. They also say students in particular tend to put too much on their plates and should try to prioritize a little more. The one thing that, that kills me is uh, that there's always something to be that you could do more. We have to make hard decisions about where to spend time and, and then not stress about the things that you cannot get done. Experts say students usually worry too much about the things they can't control. Let go of the past and the future things and focus on the one thing in front of us right now. And after finals, some students might think twice when planning their classes and activities for the upcoming semester. So 20 credits, I'll have to rethink it next time I make that decision. Experts also say prioritizing and learning to relax aren't just for finals week. They can be helpful any time in our lives. The Coastal Center on campus has a program to help students learn to manage stress. Lauren? Thanks, Sarah. Hide your statues and hide your wires because metal theft is on the rise along the Wasatch Front. Police say a Salt Lake man recovered one of 11 stolen statues yesterday after thieves stole the bronze figures around Thanksgiving. Police also arrested the man who had the statue in his possession and believe a local metal recycler bought pieces of the other missing statues. A Utah Highway Patrol spokesman says seven people have died in nine different crashes in the past two weeks, and most of the fatalities involve people not wearing seatbelts. Police are also investigating more than half of the crashes as incidents involving driving under the influence. And the UHP says they'll be on the roads more to try to crack down on impaired drivers and seatbelt enforcement. And doctors say a new extreme sport could change your life for the worse, but as 11 News reporter Alexis Flake shows us, jumping gym owners say the benefits outweigh the risks. I knew going into it, like people were just like, oh yeah, some people get hurt sometimes, and I didn't really think anything of it. But now Kelsey says it's hard to ignore the titanium rod in her leg, all because she jumped a little too high two months ago. Kelsey is one of dozens of people in Utah recovering from life-altering injuries from trampoline parks. The popularity of these trampoline-filled warehouses is on the rise. But what goes up must come down. And doctors say those few moments in the air aren't worth it. That's simply a matter of physics. You know, you go 25 or 30 feet in the air on a trampoline, you got to come down and your legs sometimes can't support that sort of pressure. 
Phillips says he's seen more than 60 life-altering injuries from trampoline parks in the last 18 months. But managers of these parks say the majority of people walk out of gyms uninjured. Trampoline park owners say jumping isn't as dangerous as it seems. In fact, you're more likely to be injured driving here than jumping on a trampoline. Even though jumping has its risks, managers say some people have seen benefits that outweigh them. Kids can be active and they don't even know it. They're working out and they don't even know they're getting a workout. We've had people come here that have lost a ton of weight just playing here. Because trampoline parks are springing up into a new industry, the government doesn't regulate it yet. So gyms create their own rules. Even though some say it can be dangerous, gym owners say they're not forcing anyone to jump here. In Provo, Alexis Flake, 11 News. Doctors say if you choose to jump, stay away from somersaults and flips and keep children under age six away from trampolines. When 11 News at noon returns, train tragedy. The family of the New York man killed by an oncoming subway train speaks out and shares their words of grief. And one tough breakfast, your body needs iron to be healthy, but do you know just how magnetic your cereal is? Your breakfast cereal may be magnetic. 11 News reporter Brenna Donnelly met with BYU nutritionists to uncover the iron shavings in your Wheaties. It's an average Saturday morning and you're sitting down to your favorite bowl of cereal. But what's really in there? The answer may surprise you. Legitimate iron shavings in my cereal. Are you serious? I had to see it to believe it, so graduate student Jesse Daly and Dr. Michael Dunn set up an experiment in the BYU Food Science Lab. All you need is a good magnet, a box of iron-fortified cereal, and a blender. When you move the cereal mixture over these strong magnets, they pull the iron shavings right out. Dry them off and take a look at that. These filings right here represent the iron that is present in about six cups of your average fortified cereal. But the best part about these iron shavings is that they're not bad for you at all. They're actually good for you. Iron is a necessary nutrient in the body, and so it is required to be added to certain products. Dr. Dunn says these flakes are the best way to ingest iron because they won't change the color of your food like these iron salts. And the small size makes it easy to eat. The problem in today's society is people are, you know, frantically going from one place to another and, you know, grabbing a bite here, grabbing a bite there. They may not eat a balanced diet. People are like, oh my gosh, that's in my food, that's disgusting, I'll never eat cereal again. But, I mean, iron is something that you need to have in your diet and really there's no better way to get it other than iron filings. Daly and Dunn say there's nothing to worry about, but it's still good for people to know what's in their Wheaties. In Provo, Brenna Donnelly, 11 News. Breakfast cereal isn't the only way to get iron. You can also get it from red meats and green leafy vegetables. Law enforcement charged a New York man with causing the death of a subway rider. Witnesses say 30-year-old Naeem Davis pushed 50-year-old Kai Suk Han onto the subway tracks. The train struck Han and killed him. The family recently gave a few words expressing their grief at this time. Our family is grieving now, but we want to thank everyone who has reached out to us and offered their help. We are suffering in sorrow, but we have the support of, of family, friends, and our church to help us through this time. Prosecutors say Davis never offered to help Han off the tracks. Davis now faces charges of second-degree murder and indifference to life. Guatemalan po police arrested the McAfee antivirus creator for illegally entering the country, clashes in Cairo and in deaths, and puppies relieve stress for students at the University of Canada. Here's your look at news from around the world. Guatemalan police arrested software company founder John McAfee Wednesday for illegally entering the country hours after saying he would seek asylum there. The antivirus guru fled the nation of Belize, where he's a person of interest in the murder of a fellow expat. The Guatemalan Foreign Ministry will soon decide whether or not McAfee can stay. And clashes in the streets of Cairo over a presidential referendum have left at least six people dead and 450 injured. Opponents of President Mohamed Morsi are furious over his proposed constitution because they say it gives Morsi an unbalanced amount of power. But opposition also came from within when Mohamed Saif became the fourth presidential advisor to resign during the protests. 
And a university in Canada is letting students play with puppies to help them through rough final exams. The so-called puppy room provides students with trained therapy dogs, helping to melt away the stress of college. More than 300 students waited nearly 45 minutes to pet the therapeutic pups. Since learning about it on Twitter, the puppy room has inspired other schools to consider their own animal therapy projects. And that's a look at news from around the world. Lauren? Thanks, Sean. Ariel, I'm counting down to Christmas, but it's still so warm outside. Do you know what's going on? We have had a few warm days, but this weekend's looking a little different. Your 11 news when we return. of a foggy start to the day but that sh that fog should be clearing out as we get into the afternoon but we if you take a look outside you can see there's cloud coverage but the sun is going to be shining through that the, that cloud those clouds in the fog so we're going to be at about 45 to 50 degrees today currently we're at about 43 degrees our humidity 87 percent so pretty high and we're going to be getting showers tonight but i'll talk to you about that in a little and a calm wind speed um, what to expect tonight 20 percent um, chance of rain um, mostly cloudy west northwest wind of about six miles per hour becoming calm as the night goes on 34 degrees for our low scattered showers like i said and our sunset at five o'clock p.m taking a look at the bigger picture we've had scattered showers um, confined to the southern western part of the state um, you can see they kind of move through right here um, but those will be clearing out with the sun and southern utah is going to be warm um, and we are also in northern Utah experiencing warmer weather. We haven't had much action up here, but the storms have moved through down here. Um, our highs um, for across the state, we have Logan at 47, Wendover at 47. This part of the state, the Uinta Basin side, about 55, so between the mid 40s to the up um, mid 50s for um, this side, but upper 40s to mid 50s and Wasatch Front, over here, we've had fog, but that's going to be clearing out with the sun as well. And clouds for the western south part of the state, so 54 and 64 for St. George and Cedar. So pretty warm down there. The sun is shining through those clouds. Um, so throughout today, and we'll see, we'll talk about the weekend in a second. Southern Utah five day forecast. We'll have low 60s throughout the week. Um, warm. It picks up, the wind picks up starting. Um, Sunday, we see that temperature drop 49 and 30, but as you can see, 64, 40, so Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday it drops. So we have warmer weather up to Sunday and we're gonna see a bit of a cold front. And then northern Utah five-day forecast, we have a mild day as far as today, 64 and 40. Um, Saturday, strong, a strong cold front comes in, and this, it's gonna be a little lower on Saturday. It's actually, um, there's gonna, we should have 60% chance of snow on Friday, and we actually have 20% on Saturday, and we have snow coming. So I'm excited about that. I'm crossing my fingers because it was supposed to come in this last weekend, and it didn't. As long as we have snow on December 24th and December 25th for <laughs> Christmas, I am happy. Other than I that, agree. I could care less. Cross <laughs> our fingers for that. Thanks, Ooh. Ariel. Yeah. So Clint, we didn't get to see a BYU basketball game last night. But at the same time, volleyball is gearing up for a huge matchup tomorrow night. Yeah, the Lady Cougars are in Omaha, the Sweet Next on sports, we're going to talk about Ooh. sports cheer, how Change. these athletes swap their jerseys Change. for Santa hats. And kudos to Kobe. What major milestone did Kobe, did the Mamba reach last night? I'll tell you when we come back. Stay tuned. Here to make his... Twenty-two-year-old Utah State basketball player Danny Berger is now talking with friends and family and regaining his strength. Berger's heart stopped beating on Tuesday at Utah State's last practice before their scheduled game versus BYU. Doctors still don't know the reason for his surprising cardiac arrest, and they continue to do tests. Officials from both schools postponed the basketball game with no rescheduled date yet. The women's volleyball take to the court Friday in Omaha, Nebraska to take on number five Oregon in the Sweet 16 round of the NCAA tournament. The Cougars lead the series versus the Ducks 9 to 1, and the winner of the game will move on to play either number 13 Washington or number four Nebraska. The Omaha regional final game happens quick as players will resume the following day on December 8th. 
With the holidays right around the corner, BYU athletic athletes are taking a break from their finals and time on the court. 11 Sports reporter London Clawson talked to some of the Cougars about their plans to give back. Tis the season where a handful of athletes gather together to find a family who is in need of a little Christmas spirit. And I get to see everyone else kind of out of their element because you just see them as athletes and you have the stereotypical athlete mentality. It's really cool to see everyone do as much as they can to help these families out. The athletic department selects a group of athletes called the Cougar Council, who then finds a family in need. This was really was one of the coolest projects we've done of the year, and it was a lot of fun and, you know, to be able to help another family in need and stop thinking about ourselves for once. These athletes become Santa's elves for the holidays by giving the family 12 days of Christmas. This family um, came here from Hawaii, so they don't have a whole lot of warm clothing, and their dad is struggling with arthritis, and he's not able to work and so they're struggling um, really badly with financially. They give things like winter coats, food, and gift cards to restaurants and other places where they can have fun as a family. After the athletes are done shopping, they wrap up these gifts and put them on the family's doorstep so they can see what Santa's little helpers brought them. As they throw all of these gifts into the sleigh to give to the good little boys and girls, Santa's elves say that this act of service is a great success. Oh yeah, it's a year In Provo, right. London Clawson, 11 Sports. The BYU Athletic Department says that the athletes give BYU a great rep as they serve the community, and they plan to keep the 12 days of Christmas tradition alive each year. And the Black Mamba is the youngest player in NBA history to surpass 3,000 career points. Kobe came into last night's game against New Orleans only 13 points away from the milestone. Late in the second quarter, Kobe made a slash into the lane and with the nifty footworks, makes history surpassing 30,000 points. At 34 years and 104 days old, Kobe replaces Wilt Chamberlain's previous record by over a year. Pagasol and Steve Nash and other teammates exchange hugs and congratulate Kobe on reaching the historic moment and making NBA history. But Kobe wasn't done yet. He added this bucket off the steal and finished with 29 points on 10 of 17 shooting as the Lakers take this one easily, 103 to 87. And Bronco Mendenhall finally addressed the rumors about his connection to the open job at the University of Colorado. When asked about the situation, Bronco answered bluntly saying, I didn't express any interest, haven't been contacted, didn't interview, and didn't know that I was a candidate. Other than that, I guess I'm a finalist from what I've been told. He went on to say that friends told him of the rumor because he doesn't keep up with sports news or radio. And we just found out, unfortunately, bad news for BYU women's basketball. Lexi Eaton is out with a right knee injury for the season. Well, she not, tore her ACL. That's not good. She's your leading oh, scorer. No. That's mm -hmm. not any good. At least for good news, the Jazz won last night, beat Orlando. So that is a good thing. Something good to look at. Yes. Thanks, Clint. And still to come on 11 News at noon, tacky traditions. One teen's business is looking pretty ugly, but he's sure ringing in the cash for some Christmas clothing. We'll be right back. A Wisconsin teen is cashing in on an ugly holiday Christmas tradition, Christmas sweaters. Jack McCarthy sold his first tacky sweater on eBay for a huge profit. Jack started shopping for these hideous sweaters at flea markets, thrift stores, and yard sales across six different states. UltimateUglyChristmas.com sells the sweaters for 20 to 50 bucks a piece. Business wasn't always merry for McCarthy, but he is now shipping out about 40 sweaters a day. I think I will pass on getting one of those, especially for 50 bucks. I don't know, I love ugly sweaters, but a part of me just likes the thrill of the chase. I like thrifting for it. I just don't like sweaters, period, especially when they make you look like it. I'd grab one, definitely, if it was 20 bucks, and wear that all over the place. <laughs> That's sure. what it's you? <laughs> Christmas sweaters, I, yeah. Well, it's our last show until the end of January. It's been great to work with everybody. Yeah. It'll be fun as it comes So through. Merry Christmas to yeah, everybody. Merry Christmas to everybody. <laughs> Have a great holiday. Finals for the students that are watching. Mm -hmm. Do a good job. And that's 11 News at Noon for Thursday, December 6th. You can join us anytime at our website, 11news.byu.edu. Thanks for watching and have a great afternoon.